What seems utterly unfathomable now was a real possibility 19 years ago. Greg Popovich was on the verge of being fired early in the 1999 lockout shortened season. Pop was in just his third year on the Spurs bench and didn't possess nearly the cachet he does now. So in San Antonio, one of the favorites to win the West in 1999 was floundering early that year. The rumors of a coaching change became very real. Pop doesn't mind us telling this story, but Pop was on a hot seat. I was on that, that Spurs team. Uh, we were, were six and eight. I think the Jazz blew us out. Uh, we looked awful. We got Duncan and Robinson. We were one of the favorites to get to the finals. Doc Rivers is doing our TV games, and there's rumors that Doc is going to take over for Pop. I was doing actually play-by-play. Uh, -play. The games were on the station I work for now, and one of the guys I worked with a lot was Doc Rivers. And all of a sudden, there was a lot of tension now. Is Pop the guy? Should somebody else step in? It was true, and we definitely felt it. We talked about that. Um, we love Pop. And this is before Greg Popovich of today, 2017, 18, with five championships and the resume that he has, was that Greg Popovich. This was the Greg Popovich of no championships. No championships, no awards, no all-star games or Olympic gigs. Not yet. When the lockout short 1999 season began, Greg Popovich wasn't on the short list of greatest coaches ever. Instead, he was on a long list of NBA head coaches without job security. After a double-digit home loss to Utah, which Pop was ejected, the Spurs traveled to Houston. They brought with them a 6-8 record and rumors of Pop's imminent dismissal. I coached overseas for 17 years, and uh, I came to the Spurs really as a guest uh, with uh, R.C. Buford and Pop, and I remember him coming to me and saying, you know, we started out quite slow. I'm not too sure, you know, what my future is going to be here. I want you to know that you will be okay. I will make sure that you are okay. But what I remember so clearly was Pop was just so stable and comfortable in his own shoes, and he wasn't panicking. He was just urging us to continue to work on our weaknesses and that we'd get there. Pop may not have been panicked, but his players decided to take action, calling a team meeting in Houston that may have saved their head coach's Hall of Fame career. The meeting was called by Avery Johnson. All the coaches got off the bus. All the, the staff got off the bus. The medical staff got off the bus. Avery Johnson called the meeting, and he led the meeting. And, you know, he talked about what we needed to do. Pop rescued my career when I was playing with the Golden State Warriors, when he was an assistant coach under Don Nelson, and gave me an opportunity to come to San Antonio and keep my career going. And it just was, you know, out of a sense of loyalty to Pop. And I wanted to make sure he was taken care of and let the team know how passionate I was about help saving his career. The Spurs dominated the Rockets in a 17-point win and effectively began the run to their first championship. So that was really the key game, in my mind, in Pop's entire career. We go to Houston, and we're 6-8, and eight, and the rumor mill is flying. Doc's going to be the coach. Uh, and we, uh, we kicked Houston's butt, and we did not look back. The dismantling of Houston was the first of nine straight wins for the Spurs in the start of a 31-5 finish to the short regular season. The momentum carried over to a postseason run that was both magical and miraculous. Into Sean Elliott. He fires the three. The Spurs went 15-2 in the playoffs, which culminated in the 99 title, clinched by the player who called that team meeting four months early. Sean Elliott fakes the three, drives, kicks the wing, a long A.J. jumper is good! Avery Johnson drills it from the baseline, and the Spurs have regained the lead. We all understood the talent and potential that we have on that team, and sometimes to get where you have to go, you have to have somebody on that team to call guys out, you know, to hold guys accountable. 
So Avery Johnson caught himself out and a couple other guys on that team. And like I said, that meeting changed the course of our season moving forward. But suppose Popovich hadn't survived the season. Would the Spurs have still rallied for the 99 championship or four more titles? And would Pop, a near mythical figure now, have ever coached the NBA again? What if? One of the things you think about, if, if, if Pop was fired, does Tim come back? If Tim doesn't come back, are the Spurs still in San Antonio? Or do the Spurs move elsewhere? Are they in St. Louis? Or are they, are they in Las Vegas? Or do they move to a different venue? The Spurs gave him a chance. They, you know, were patient with him. And, um, you know, he's a legendary coach now. So I'm glad that the Spurs, uh, you know, didn't fire Pop. Because if they would have fired him, who knows, they may be on their 10th coach in the last 17 years instead of one. Everything's changed. I mean, look how many disciples of Pop there have been out there. Look how many head coaches have been in his system. And it's being played all over. And that moment, right then and there, Pop had been removed as a head coach. Don't think we're celebrating five championships in the city. We really don't. Had they fired Pop? Oh my God, can you imagine? I'm pretty sure he would have resurfaced and done pretty well. but. Pop himself will tell you the whole key to his success was Tim and David, right? When you're establishing yourself as a coach, I can vouch for this right now. To be able to establish myself as a coach with Steph Curry and Draymond, Andre, Clay, Katie, that's a different deal. Now I can become who I am while winning and while working with talent. Well, that was Pop's um, evolution as a coach. Duncan, Robinson, Popovich. You ever think about what would have happened if Pop wouldn't have survived that? I don't. I, I don't. It's, that's life. We, we roll with it, and it seems a long, long time ago. And I think, uh, you know, he's going to click his heels whenever he wants and go to the Naismith Hall of Fame. And uh, that's a given.